We've seen and we price the Ryzen 7000 chips. Elon Musk lies and sells stock and LG wants to vibrate you with their televisions. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today is a big day because we now have some pictures, not official, but leaked and kind of within the theme of what we would expect from AMD of the next generation box art of the Ryzen 7000 series chips, as well as some pricing indication. So, I have been a huge fan of AMD's Ryzen boxes since they've launched. Threadripper was also immaculate packaging. It forced Intel to up their game with their retail packaging, starting with the 9900K being that dodecahedron. And I honestly, especially for the flagship processors, you know, the Ryzen 9s, the i9s, I want to see this. I want immaculate packaging. And I think we're getting that with the new Ryzen 9 7000 series box that to me, looks really good. I like the branding on all of this. I like the little cutout hole for the CPU. I just, I'm in love with this. Let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. So it's likely that this top tier packaging is only gonna be for the Ryzen 9 class of products and everything below that's gonna likely be a smaller box or uh, just reconfigured because it, it needs to fit the cooler, etc. But on top of that, we also have some indication of the pricing of Ryzen 7000 with the 7700X being equivalent to the 5700X pricing. The 7800X is gonna cost more than the 5800X and the Ryzen 9 in the 7000 series will cost more than the Ryzen 9 in the 5000 series. So that's the information that came along with the picture being submitted to video cards. So that likely would put us in the price point of roughly $800 plus for the 7950X, considering that's where the 5950X launched. The 7900X would be nearly $600, considering that the 5900X launched at 550. The 7800X, which is this is the first time we're actually hearing any report about that chip is going to start at roughly $450 and we're expecting something like the 7700X, which for all indications we've had so far was going to be the mainstream Ryzen 7 option, should be hopefully $300. That would be great. I would love that. The $300 replaces that 5600X price point, which was so stupid at the time. I would love to see AMD come through with this. But on top of that, we also got some information with regards to overclocking settings that can be happening with Ryzen 7000, including the fact that there's a lot of memory play that can happen with these chips, potentially even going up to three gigahertz on the Infinity Fabric. And from other reports that I was reading, the memory frequency that actually might be optimal for Ryzen 7000 is DDR5 6000 megahertz, which or mega transfers per second, however you want to divvy that up. But that is going to be some spicy, spicy chips. And we got more details on why we think this is happening sometime soon. But what's gonna happen right now is today's video sponsor. Today's episode of Hot News is sponsored by Smoosat and their SA3 electric scooter. I've been riding this thing for the last few weeks and I'm having a lot more fun than I thought I was going to. And that's thanks to the amazing features on the SA3. It's got a 20 mile range on its 12 amp hour rechargeable battery on top of the fact that it can support a human up to 220 pounds. And as somebody who's just shy of 200 pounds after doing all his weight loss stuff, it can move me around quite considerably, getting up to a max speed of 15.6 miles per hour, which feels really fast when you're actually doing it on a scooter. But not only that, it can also go up hills, which living in Pittsburgh is a necessity. It can go up a 14 degree hill with an above average size adult human. And that's thanks to the 350 watt brushless hub motor that allows you to get that quick speed. And the battery that's in this thing is automotive grade, which allows it to last at least 800 charging cycles. And then it's got a bunch of great comfort features like a speedometer, different modes like eco, drive, and sport, the ability to fold down flat and then lock so that it doesn't actually come apart while you're transporting it. It has a brake light, it has a headlight, and most importantly, it's just a ton of fun and I think second most importantly, it has it has this kickstand so I can just let it go. It transports great, 
It's fun to travel on. It's fun to ride just because. And best of all, if you use our link in the video description, you can get up to $100 off the SA3 scooter yourself. By using code HOT NESA3, you get 14% discount code and a $30 off coupon using the link in the video description. Again, that's up to $100 off the SA3 scooter. Tons of great features, tons of great fun. I really enjoy it. Big thanks to Smoothsat for sponsoring today's episode. And Gigabyte's riding along on their scooter of their own sending out review sample motherboards of the X670E motherboards. They're sending them out. So there was a well-known overclocker who received a sample of the X670E Aorus Master and posted a picture of it on Twitter. But as you can see right here, that tweet's gone with him following up saying he was asked to remove the picture of the X670E as there seems to be confusion over the exact embargo rules. I have no issues to comply with this request. I look forward to what is bound to be a very exciting platform launch. So details. Coming soon, motherboards being seeded out, likely with chips, because it's a whole new socket. You're not gonna be able to do no tests if you don't have those processors, but Ryzen 7000 might be hot dropping near you sometime soon. But in case you're on AMD, oh, there's a new vulnerability that might be affecting your processor. There's some squip vulnerabilities that affect all simultaneous multi-threading processors of Ryzen. So essentially everything that most people would have. So there's a vulnerability. It's a medium severity threat. It's in Squip. You got to disable SMT if you want it, but people would have to have access to the host and the CPU core, which like if they're already there, they have access to likely everything anyways. So for the average person, this is not going to be a huge deal. This is just a problem for uh, anybody who this might be a problem for. I, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, but Ryzen chips have another vulnerability and you're vulnerable to getting the crypto stocks attacked to you. Bitcoin up 4.5% to be at nearly $24,000, having a high, high day. Ethereum up 10.79% to be at $18.58. Look at that shelf that it created for itself. And Dogecoin up 5.3% to be at 7.1 cents. What UFD project am I most excited for besides the lightning? I, I want the cannonball for the cure year two to happen. We're really trying to get that put together. But Reese, I have a question for you, good sir. If you're load shedding all of the time, wouldn't you just stop building sheds so that you don't have to load them? How many sheds can one Reese load? Oh, a lot. Have you seen the size of this man? Yo. He's an absolute like, load shedding machine. Shed, shed on each arm. Three shed on me so much. <laughs> Thanks for the hottest tech deals out on the internet, Reese. And you want the hottest deals in electric vehicles? Well, Tesla might be that for you because Elon Musk decided to hot dump his stock. $6.9 billion worth. Yes, Elon Musk can never get away from the meme numbers, even when it's selling billions of dollars worth of his own stock. Anyways, this happened after the shareholders meeting where Elon Musk said that he believes that Tesla might become the most valuable company in the entire world. So we got, he sold it. So he reported to the SEC, the filing that he needed to about reporting the fact that he sold on August 5th, August 8th, and August 9th for a ton of shares to worth, be worth $16.9 billion. He still owns 155 million Tesla shares. So this is by no means the majority of anything, but uh, this goes in contradiction, number one, to the fact that he believed that Tesla would be the number one valued stock. He would hold it. Number two, he said on April 28th that there were no further Tesla sales planned after today. And then when asked for clarification of no more selling. He said in the hopefully unlikely event that Twitter forces this deal to close and some equity partners don't come through, it is important to avoid a sale of emergency sale of Tesla stock, which is a really like you kind of just emergency sold it you, without any warning. You didn't tell anybody you filed it after you sold it. It it's kind of the same. It's six cats in one bag and another dog on the other is as the saying goes. I don't exactly know ex what's going on there. There's a lot of Elon Musk stuff that's not 
quite making sense to me, but that's okay. I'm not a ruthless billionaire who's trying to change the world with rockets and electric vehicles. And Samsung's not trying to do that. They're trying to change the world with foldable, flippable phones. And they've unveiled the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4 at their Galaxy Unpacked event. So the Z Flip 4 is actually gonna be remarkably similar to the 3. It's gonna come with a bigger battery, updated camera, but the same exact pricing. It has a few changes to it. It's powered by the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, eight gigabytes of RAM, and you can get up to 512 gigs of storage. The Fold 4 has wider displays, 50 megapixel camera, and an $1,800 price point. And there, we'll leave links in the video description in case you wanna hear about the hands-on with them. I think I am most intrigued by the Flip 4. I kinda like the flippable aspect to it. It does go back to the Motorola Razr day. It does seem like the Flip 3 sold very well, especially at that $1,000 price point, which is a lot of money for a cell phone, but if you consider inflation, this is like, this is like $300, 2015 dollars. This is like, this is a steal. You could, you could have bought a whole Samsung for this back in 2020. Speaking of inflating things, Disney is going to be inflating the price of their streaming services. Disney plus Hulu getting an increase in their price as well as introducing their ad supported tier for the exact same price as what people are paying for Disney plus right now. This is something that Disney has said has going to be coming for a while now, but Disney plus is going up to $10.99 starting December 8th. Hulu is going from $12.99 to $14.99 and the Disney plus Hulu and ESPN plus bundle is going to start costing $20 a month which it makes sense that they were gonna do this. This is a long time coming. You gotta inflate those numbers, increase the profits and keep the money in the pockets of the shareholders. And in case you wanna keep the internet in the pockets of the people who need it, Google Fiber might be here for you because they're starting to roll out to new states again, which is something that hasn't happened in quite some time. They're gonna be focusing on five new states. So they've rolled out to Iowa. It was Fiber's first new state in five years, but they're gonna be focusing on Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Nebraska, and Nevada for the growth of the next several years for Google Fiber's rollout, which includes up to two gigabit per second internet. I remember being so jealous when Google Fiber first rolled out, I think it was Kansas City, the first city, I believe it was. It was $70 a month for gigabit internet and I cried because I was like, that is half of what I'm paying for 50 meg, why? And now I'm, I'm actually paying I'm paying $90 for gigabit here, but that, I mean, I'm happy with that. It's, it's, it's duplex, so I get up and down. It's great, it's good stuff. You know what else is good stuff? Being vibrated, I love vi vibrations. It's good, good vibrations. LG announcing that they're gonna vibrate you with a 97 inch OLED TV, which can offer 5.1 stereo surround sound without any speakers using the vibration of the OLED panel, as you can see here. So LG calling it the cinematic sound OLED, which allows the display to vibrate and generate the sound directly from the display without separate speakers. A 5.1 channel sound system is embedded into the widescreen, creating a performance that also offers a cinematic level of immersion. This is not the first time that we've actually seen acoustics being made in OLED TV. Sony's done this before, but Sony actually didn't claim that it had any stereo surround sound setup. It was just supposed to be like a center speaker and then you're supposed to have your own sound for it. So this is a little different. Hopefully it's good. Hey, LG. You know how we work together on the 8K TV? I love it, I still have it. I am more than willing to work with you on another video. A 97 inch cinematic sound OLED? I would love, hit your boy up. I'm available. I got, I got plenty of room to shill for that. And I'm gonna continue to shill for graphics cards because that's what we do here. This is shill news, by the way. And according to new reports, GPU shipments are gonna be dropping up to 50%. So you need to buy more right now. Okay, the prices will never get lower. There's nobody on the internet who said that and then regretted saying something like that. So a report coming out from DigiTime saying that Intel is expected to suffer a reduction of between eight and $11 billion in revenue. Nvidia is expecting to sell 50% fewer GPUs. However, AMD and Apple are both expected to see minor losses from the crypto winter that's currently going on, probably because they placed their bets in a little bit more diversified areas. And speaking about Intel's GPU plans, they came out with a new blog post kind of in the face of a lot of rumors that there's contention and things are going wrong and oh, we're not going to get them into Intel. Just kind of reiterating same things that we already know in the blog post, essentially saying that the GPUs are scheduled for release later this year. 
driver updates are coming. They're working on big titles. They're trying to make it so that it's a good launch. Hold your horses and they'll bring the semi truck to your neighborhood sometime soon. And I'm going to semi truck on out of here because this episode of Hot News is over. We'll see you back here for more hot tech news to close out your week on Friday, my friends. Until then.